Hello friends, my name is Nick and today we're going to spotlight six leafless houseplants. And what I mean by leafless is going to vary for each houseplant specifically. You will see what I mean by that as we go along. But I can guarantee you that each of these houseplants is going to provide you with some excellent architecture, personality, and character. I think that's the nicest way to put it. But let's get started off with uh, a plant or a group of plants that I've been touching on a lot lately. So I just want to kind of get this one out of the way. And that is Ripsalis. So this one right here is a Ripsalis Owaldiana. You can see how much character and personality it has. You can get a vibe for what I mean. And this leafless houseplant in particular, these sticks are the leaves. There are a decent handful of different types of Ripsalis that you're going to see if you go into your local houseplant stores or nurseries. You'll probably find at least like five to 10 different varieties hanging out in the cacti and succulent selection. And they might start off small. When I purchased mine, it was just these two little pieces that are coming out the front here. But over time, it's shot off these uh, longer branches or appendages that then shoots out even more of these branches slash appendages. You can see right here, these two uh, bright pink ones are some more uh, leaves. I want to call them leaves for convenience today, but uh, these sticks are coming out once again. So this plant is actively growing. Uh, and the, as I mentioned, it gives you just a lot of fun character. You're not going to see a lot of plants like this and a lot of cacti in particular too. And I'm avoiding just like, obviously just like a stick of a cactus. Like, you know, just a standard cactus, what comes to mind, doesn't have any leaves on it. I'm not going to be talking about any of those today. I'm going to give you a little bit more character, but a lot of the house plants, I will, uh, spoil you that uh, there a lot of you are going to give you this very similar vibe where it's just a, a lot of sticks and no leaves so I, I will let you guys know that in advance but this one in particular and rip cells across the board are going to give you a lot more of this just like wild Medusa-esque uh, vibe very just like willy-nilly hanging freely boho there's so many adjectives that I could use to describe this plant they really do provide a lot of character and it's going to give you some nice juxtaposition amongst all of the foliage in your home and one that's going to give you a similar vibe of the Ripsalis, but also just completely different overall, is this really funky guy right here. This is a Cissus quadrangularis, and you will actually see on this, I hope I'm not cheating today, this one actually does have a couple of leaves on it. However, I do find with my Cissus quadrangularis, these leaves are pretty short-lived. They will only really be on the plant throughout the growing season. And then once we hit fall, these leaves fall off if they even last that long. And then what we are left with is this just lovely mess of sticks once again. Uh, this one is called a quadrangularis because you can see the leaves or the sticks, the stems are in a square. If I cut this down the middle and showed it to you straight on, it would be a square, which I think is really funky and provides you some different texture and shape, especially when compared to some of the other ones that I'm gonna be showing you today. A lot of geometry going on here, but this one is really fun in the fact that it will grow leaves and it's going to give you some more of that foliage aspect throughout the year, but then it's also just going to at some point, at least in my experience. Some other people might have different experiences with this houseplant, but it really just loves being this fun Medusa stick mess, and I really appreciate that. Like I said, it brings a lot of uh, different character and personality. I am a sucker for Cissus. Believe it or not, this is in the same family as grape plants, like grape vines. And there's a bunch of different Cissus plants out there. Some are more succulent, some are more leafy. This one's obviously kind of falling in between, uh, but just this whole leafless, uh, overall appearance is just something that really caught my eye and is what added it to my wish list a couple of years ago and I've been very happy that I've been trying out growing this over the last few years. It's definitely not one to be missed. And speaking of ones that could technically get leaves on them, I was, like I said, the thing about the cacti, I was like, should I talk about this houseplant today? Uh, this is a euphorbia. This one right here is a euphorbia trigona variegata. And this is probably the thing that's going to res most resemble a classic cactus today. This is not a true cactus though, it's a succulent. The reason I wanted to talk about it today is because we are so used to these houseplants looking just like this right here, just this standard cactus looking thing right here. But these do actually grow leaves. <laughs> I think I 
can see this it's dangling right here. I didn't want to knock it off before I started filming today because it's the only, uh, you know, example I have of uh, what the leaves on this house plant look like. They're very small. They're not the star of the show. It's absolutely about the whole uh, center stalk here. But if you go into your local house plant stores, you might see some larger euphorbia trigonas or other types of euphorbia that do have leaves on the house plant. And uh, these will grow and hold on the leaves if they are grown in a more moist condition, if you're watering them a little bit more often. But me, Watering my plants often, <laughs> I don't know about that. This one particularly sits in the back corner of a windowsill and I do not get to water it very often. I'm a little forgetful with this one in particular, so uh, yeah, it does not grow leaves. You can kind of see where my care kind of uh, shifted with this. I don't really know what's going on. It's got a lot of character, but you can tell where I bought the plant <laughs> right here, obviously. Uh, I put it in my south facing window in my old home and maybe it was just I don't know what was going on, but it was, it was doing something right here. And then ever since moving to my current home, my east facing window has grown this little like bulbous part right here. And of course we're going to be moving again in the next couple months. So uh, this house is going to have a lot of character. Let's just say that. But I kind of said at the beginning of this video, my precursor was that all of these house plants are going to have a lot of character. This one for uh, more reasons uh, than others. And kind of going along with that more like cactusy vibe, this is a stapelia right here. This is known for its flowers that it gets. It gets these giant flowers that smell terrible. They smell like rotting meat. It's really disgusting. Mine has not flowered in my home. It's just kind of a fun experiment. It also does an amazing job at catching cat hair. I spent a decent amount of time trying to clean all of it off before I sat down to film this, but I gave up because yeah, there was just too much. It's very fuzzy. You wouldn't expect this to be as fuzzy as it is. It's got like a completely felted texture to it, which I think is really fun. And mine's growing very upright right now. It's obviously still pretty young, but you might often see these in hanging baskets at your local houseplant store spilling off the edge. Uh, and they give you like a really fun, similar to the Ripsalis and the Cissus Quadrangularis vibe. But I think the flower is really fun. I probably wouldn't want this inside my home while it's flowering. This might be something you move outside for that but still something to really enjoy and uh, you can kind of notice with mine the the sunlight differences that it has uh, clearly this side is facing away from the sunlight because if i move it to this side <laughs> you're going to see it looks scorched practically it's got this like brownish reddish rusty appearance and then the other side is completely green so maybe i should flip this around but also this could probably use a new planter soon i got this from somebody who used to frequent the houseplant store, he just gave me a tiny little piece of this. Like it was no more than two stalks coming off. And this was probably like three years ago at this point. And it's just, uh, it just looks like a hand's just coming out of the soil, multiple hands just pressed together coming out of the soil. It's got a lot of character. You can see even in the center here, there's a, another branch coming in. This one's new as well. So it's constantly growing new branches, which is really exciting. A very uh, robust, rewarding house plants that has just a very funky exterior. Love the appearance of this. It's going to give you a lot of character and definitely be a conversation piece and might really surprise people with not only the feeling, but if you explain to them about the flower or if you, <laughs> if it is flowering your home and you trick somebody to go smell the flower, <laughs> that was something that was fun when I worked at the plant store, just tricking people into smelling bad smelling flowers. So many flowers in houseplants smell like feet and bad cheese. <sighs> it's surprising. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's move on. We have two more to talk about today. I want to talk about this one next. This one I have growing in one of those fun wall-mounted planters uh, that I think I have this available at, at least in some colors. I don't know if it's available in this uh, yellow, uh, linked on my Amazon associate storefront. So there's not products that I sell. It's just products that I like that I link into my store, which you will find uh, linked in the description below. And this one, I believe I recently got from Steve's Lee's and we did our unboxing and I had another piece that I just shoved them all together in here. So of course I have to let you know that you can use code Philly Foliage to save 22% on your next purchase from Steve's Leave if you haven't used that code yet. It's one per customer, I believe, until the end of this year, 2022. But the name Pseudo Ripsalis is suggesting that it looks very similar to the Ripsalis. So obviously 
Uh, it does look a little similar even though these leaves are a little more paddly and flat. But what sets this plant apart from the Rip Salis? Why does it deserve its own spot on this list today? Well, I don't think my plant's going to give you a great example yet because it's still acclimating my space and perhaps it could use a little bit more light. But if you Google or look up on Instagram, uh, Pseudorip Salis ramulosa or the mistletoe cactus, you're going to see that bright red color that it gets. Uh, when this thing is subject to intense sunlight, it gets really, really red. When I was growing this in my previous home, it was in a south-facing window and it was just completely red. It was absolutely gorgeous. But when you do lower the light a little bit, here in my east-facing windows, it's just not as much direct sunlight as it requires to hold into that red color or that sun stressing. It did fade back to green, a little bit of this yellowish color, but I do really appreciate just the difference that this has in comparison to that standard green color. Admittedly, I don't think the yellow is really getting the point across, but when it gets that red, it's just very, very vibrant. There's a couple of, you know, red stalks coming in right here. Maybe there will be more red than the other ones. Only time will tell, uh, but that is absolutely something that really sets this plant apart and it becomes this just huge cascading mess of these just like red paddles. It really is something to behold. They also get these berries on them. Rip Salis as well get very similar berries. Uh, they don't taste like anything. I believe they are non-toxic though, but that's why you don't find Rip Salis berries in the produce uh, section at your local houseplant store because they just don't taste like anything. So I'll leave them for the birds and whatever else eats flavorless fruit. I think there are some seeds inside. Perhaps you could grow them from seed. I've never done my research on that, but just throwing it out there that perhaps that's a possibility. But a really fun house plant, you're normally going to see this in hanging baskets, just like I was saying, cascading and just being these beautiful red messes. But this is just a slightly different way to uh, display this house plant until it starts to really start to w work its way down over time. And the last one I have to share today, I think is going to be the most wacky, while also at the same time, perhaps the most plain. So this, oh my God, it's, <laughs> It's, it's a little wacky. I think wacky is the best way to put it. Uh, this is my Epiphyllum acromanii. So it starts down here in this planter and I don't want to let it go because it's going to like the Starbucks mermaid logo, you know, with the tail. <laughs> I feel like that right now. Anyway, this thing is like uh, five feet tall. And once again, I feel like this, if I, you know, bring it back up to the plant here. It's probably looking a little similar to the Pseudorip salis that I just showed you, albeit a little bit thicker. But once again, what sets this plant right here apart from the other similar looking ones that I'm talking about today? This one in particular, flowers. Some really wonderful flowers. Uh, this Epiphyllum acromanii uh, makes a nice red flower, a very just like classic red flower. But there's some other Epiphyllums that I've grown my home. Sorry. <laughs> Leaf is rubbing up against my soft boxes if you're hearing any external sounds. Uh, but I've had other epiphyllums in my home that make different color flowers. Some have white, some have more of a purpley pink. And I personally like to save the flowers and dry them just because I like dried flowers. But they dry very, very well and preserve very, very well. So I think this plant has a lot going for it. Actually, this is a cutting. It was just this piece right here, that same person who gave me the Stapelia cutting. Uh, back at the houseplant store gave me this and it's obviously grown exponentially as well although i do think the other one looks a little bit more aesthetically appealing i don't know where i was growing this in my old home i'm growing it in my east facing windows once again here which i do think is probably just a little bit less light than this would appreciate i think this plant as well as some of the other more uh you know cacti appearing ones that i'm talking about today might appreciate more of a like west or south facing window to really bask in that full sunlight to grow their fullest potential. I still really appreciate the wacky character that it has. Uh, this one just requires a lot of space. I prop it up on the walls and the corners and on the other plants around it. So it really requires uh, the others for support, but I had to talk about this one today because it's just, it's so fun. I wish you could see the way it's just like whipping around like a, I don't even know. It's just, it's just, it's just whipping all around. Right now, it's really, it's got a lot of character, it's got a lot of personality, it's got a lot of architecture. Uh, but the, the flower, I think, is really what's going to set this one apart. You're going to see a lot of different types of epiphyllums. Uh, the acromanii is just one of many, and I think any of them is uh, willing uh, to try. However, I would say <laughs> the foliage doesn't look, you know, that immensely different, so I probably wouldn't go too head over heels 
for a plant that, you know, all of them look very similar, but just getting a couple varieties in your home is going to give you a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot of variety with the flowers. If you really like the way the flowers look and you want some different colors, but the foliage across the board isn't going to give you uh, that much of a different show. But I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up today because this thing is just getting a, a little difficult to handle. <laughs> Surprise, it hasn't snapped, but it's very, very strong. So thank you guys so much for joining me today for six leafless houseplants. There are so many more other leafless houseplants. These are just the ones that I have in my home. I know there's like leafless seropegias or like the string of hearts uh, relative. There's leafless looking hoyas where the leaf looks like the stem. There's so many fun leafless houseplants. This is absolutely a topic that I could delve a little deeper into if I bring a couple more into my home, but I think five leafless plants is good enough for me at the moment. But thank you all so much for joining me. If you don't already, you can join me over on Patreon for even more houseplant content. You can follow me at Philly Foliage on Instagram and TikTok. Of course, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.